Hi, uh, welcome again. We are about to start with our uh, third session now. And you can see we have some containers out here. So let me just explain to you what this is all about. Suppose we have these three containers and if you notice this container has a capacity mentioned let's assume it is 30 ml this container has a capacity of 75 ml and this is a third container having a capacity of 105 ml there is a larger container suppose these three containers contain some liquid and i have this spoon which i'm going to use to remove the liquid from these containers and I'm going to empty that into this larger container. Now what is this task about? We need to use the same spoon for all the three containers. Half spoons are not allowed. Whenever I use a spoon, I can only use the full spoon to empty the liquid from a container, the smaller container into a larger container. And I need to transfer the liquid from all the three containers into this larger container using the minimum possible number of such transfers. So the question here is what should be the capacity of this spoon? So I repeat the same spoon is going to be used to remove liquid from these three containers having capacities of 30, 75 and 105. This liquid is to be emptied into the larger container. The same spoon is to be used, empty spoons, half spoons not allowed and I need to complete this transfer using the minimum possible number of such operations. What is the capacity of this spoon that I should use? We'll answer this question after we've gone through the basic concepts of this third session. So let's now move on to the concepts of the third session. So we move on to our third chapter, third session, which is on HCF and LCM. So what is HCF all about? Okay, HCF stands for highest common factor. It can also be called as GCD, which is greatest common divisor, or GCF, which is greatest common factor. HCF, as I said, stands for highest common factor, but what do we really mean by HCF? So if I use these words, highest common factor, then it would represent that number, which is the largest possible number, which is a factor of all the given numbers. So if I have a set of numbers, then the number, the largest possible number, which divides all these given numbers would be the HCF. Now how do we calculate the value of HCF? So suppose I take three numbers, 56, 24 and 16, and I want to calculate the HCF of these three numbers, 56, 24 and 16. One method that I can use is factorization, which means I factorize these numbers, I express them in terms of their prime factors. So I know 56 is 8 into 7, which can be written as 2 cube into 7. I know 24 is 8 into 3, which can be written as 2 cube into 3. And I know 16 is nothing but 2 raised to 4. Now when I find the value of the HCF, what I need to consider, I need to consider only those prime factors which are common to all the numbers. So when I look at these three numbers, the only common prime factor is 2. And in addition to that, what I need to look at is, which is the smallest power of this common prime factor. So when I look at the common prime factor 2, I observe that the power here is 3, the power here is 3 and the power here is 4. So the smallest possible power anywhere is 3 and hence I take the smallest power. So my HCF is equal to 8. This is called as the factorization method. I repeat, first express the number in terms of the prime factors. Take only the common prime factor and the smallest possible power of that common prime factor that exists anywhere. This is one way of calculating the HCF. Another way of calculating the HCF, we can write down these numbers next to each other and then we start dividing by those numbers which are factors of all these given numbers. So I can see that 2 is a factor common to all the numbers. So I would get a 28 here, a 12 here and an 8 here. I still can see that 2 is common. 
so I get a 14 here I get a 6 here and I get a 4 here I can do this one more time using 2 as a common factor I get 7 3 and 2 and now I notice that when I look at these three numbers 7 3 and 2 there is no factor which is common to all these except one so this is where I stop and now I just multiply these numbers that I have listed here and this becomes my HCF. These are two ways of calculating the HCF for a given set of numbers. Having understood the concept of HCF, let us now try and see what is the meaning of LCM. LCM stands for least common multiple. So once again, if we try to understand the meaning using the words least common multiple, LCM would denote that number which is the smallest number which is a multiple of all the given numbers which means that LCM is the least possible common multiple of the number so it is that smallest number which is divisible by the given numbers how do we calculate the value of the LCM let's take up the same example so for these numbers 56 24 and 16 we calculated the HCF and we found that to be 8. We have already factorized these three numbers 56, 24 and 16. For HCF we said we take only the common factor and the smallest power. For LCM what we would do is we would take all possible factors that exist anywhere. So we can see that there are three prime factors 2, 3 and 7 hence we write down the prime factors and we now look at the largest possible power of each prime factor that appears anywhere. So the largest possible power of the prime factor 2 is 4 so we consider 4 here and for 3 and 7 it remains as 1. So my LCM will now be 16 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 7 which would be 336. So to find the LCM, we can factorize the numbers, take all the prime factors that exist and the largest power of all the prime factors. If we were to use this method to calculate the LCM, we have gone on up to a stage where we had factors which could divide all the numbers and now we have reached a stage where there is nothing common here between 7, 3 and 2. So all that we do is we not only take a product of these three which is 8 but with 8 we consider the remaining numbers out here 7, 3 and 2 and when we multiply 8 by 7 by 3 and by 2 we would end up with the same value for the LCM which is 336. So once again there are two ways that we have seen to calculate the LCM. We have already understood the meaning of HCF and LCM and we have also learned how to calculate the value of HCF and LCM for a given set of numbers. However, the examples that we took up, they were all integral values, they were integers. But what if the numbers given to us are fractions and we want to find the HCF and LCM of fractions. So how would we find out HCF and LCM of fractions? We need to remember these formulae. If we are looking at HCF of fractions, we need to consider the numerators and denominators separately for the given fractions. And hence the formula is HCF of fractions is equal to HCF of the numerators divided by the LCM of the denominators. Hence, what we do is, we consider the numerator separately, find the HCF. We consider the denominator separately, find the LCM. And then we divide the HCF of the numerators by the LCM of the denominators. And that will give us the HCF of the fractions. Similarly, if we want to find the LCM of the fractions. Once again, we consider numerators and denominators separately. We find the LCM of all the numerators. We separately find the HCF of all the denominators. And then we divide the two. So one important point about HCF and LCM of fractions is consider numerators and denominators separately. In this case find the HCF of numerators divided by LCM of denominators. 
here when you are finding LCM of fractions find the LCM of numerators divided by HCF of denominators a very important point to be noted here before we start with this whole process if the given fractions are not already in the least possible reduced form then you first need to reduce the fraction into the least possible form what do I mean by this if the fraction given to us is 8 by 10 then we cannot take 8 as the numerator and 10 as the denominator we need to reduce this to the least possible form as 4 by 5 and work with these numbers 4 and 5 there are times when this wouldn't matter it will still give you the correct answer but there are other times when you will get the wrong answer if you use these values in place of these values we've already understood the meaning of HCF and LCM and we've also learned how to calculate the value of HCF and LCM for a given set of numbers however the examples that we took up they were all integral values they were integers but what if the numbers given to us are fractions and we want to find the HCF and LCM of fractions so how would we find out HCF and LCM of fractions we need to remember these formulae if we are looking at HCF of fractions we need to consider the numerators and denominators separately for the given fractions and hence the formula is HCF of fractions is equal to HCF of the numerators divided by the LCM of the denominators hence what we do is we consider the numerator separately find the HCF we consider the denominator separately find the LCM and then we divide the HCF of the numerators by the LCM of the denominators and that will give us the HCF of the fractions similarly if we want to find the LCM of the fractions once again we consider numerators and denominators separately we find the LCM of all the numerators we separately find the HCF of all the denominators and then we divide the two so one important point about HCF and LCM of fractions is consider numerators and denominators separately in this case find the HCF of numerators divided by LCM of denominators here when you are finding LCM of fractions find the LCM of numerators divided by HCF of denominators a very important point to be noted here before we start with this whole process if the given fractions are not already in the least possible reduced form then you first need to reduce the fraction into the least possible form what do I mean by this if the fraction given to us is 8 by 10 then we cannot take 8 as the numerator and 10 as the denominator we need to reduce this to the least possible form as 4 by 5 and work with these numbers 4 and 5 there are times when this wouldn't matter it will still give you the correct answer but there are other times when you will get the wrong answer if you use these values in place of these values